this feels like the type of video I need a glass of wine for cuz I'm gonna go in <laughs> hey beauties it's Viviana and today <laughs> So I've been seeing this trend going around about using Vicks Vapor Rub as of recent for the scalp. And I posted a poll asking, um, interested in a DIY Vicks Vapor Rub for faster hair growth without petroleum in it? Because me and my naive self really thought that the only reason people hated this Vicks trend so much was because uh, it has petroleum in there and uh, yeah us naturals are so against petroleum on the scalp so i was like okay if that's the only issue people have with vicks vapor rub on the scalp me in my naive little thoughts i would just do a diy vicks vapor rub and exclude the petroleum in it apparently that's not the issue because even though I said I would take out the petroleum out of the Vicks Vapor Rub, I still got a 54% saying yes and 46% saying nah, keep that sis. And I have read the comments, I've read the comments under that poll as well and a lot of you guys are, have voiced some concerns about using Vicks Vapor Rub. Some of them are begging me not to even touch it. Do not make a DIY. Don't do nothing with Vicks Vapor Rub, okay? Leave it in 2017. However, for this particular topic, I would like you guys to just hear me out. I have put together my points, my value points on why I do not see a issue with using Vicks Vapor Rub on your scalp or or, as I was trying to put a solution out there, a DIY variation of the Vicks Vapor Rub. Now, if after listening through this video, you guys still, after listening through my points in this video, still feel that putting out a DIY Vicks Vapor Rub tutorial would be terrible, for the natural hair community, I'm gonna keep it, all right? I'm gonna post it, i just mix my little stuff together on my own and I won't post a tutorial on it, all right? Because, yeah. So first things first, everyone here grows, all right? Unless you have a underlying disease like alopecia, um, or something like that. That's the most common one I can think of off my head that will prevent your hair from growing. Now, the reason you may not see that the length is progressing is because your ends are breaking off. But growth occurs from the scalp. Now, in order to have hair growth, there are three things that I personally have narrowed down based on observation, based on research, I ain't no trichologist and doctor. My degree is in engineering, but I do have a passion for hair and hair growth. So I, I have done a lot of research and I have kind of narrowed down three things that I've noticed whenever persons say that they have a new hair growth regimen or a hair growth secret, it usually falls in these three categories. One, it's either contributing to a healthier body, which means they're eating properly, they're drinking more water, or a very popular hair growth solution, they're taking vitamins. Now, this can either be a multivitamin or a hair growth vitamin, but hair growth vitamins are multivitamins. They are, it, it is impossible to give your body more vitamins than it needs. Impossible. Everything that your body doesn't need, it pisses it out, all right? That's just facts. The priority for our bodies is our internal organs. Our skin and our nails and hair are last on the list, okay? So if you are not getting enough vitamins in your diet, your body is going to supply your organs first, and whatever little extra that it have to give your skin, nails, and hair, 
that is what they will get so it is very possible that if you're not getting enough nutrients in your body then you're going to see it in you're going to see it manifest in your hair skin and your nails all right because your body don't have enough of it to go around so yeah that is one thing so a healthy body the second category that these hair growth solutions usually fall under is increasing blood circulation to the scalp. Whenever you see people doing like the upside down method or they tell you to do, you know, yoga poses to turn your head upside down or simply massage your scalp or you know that Vanity Planet vibrating brush, yes, that is also a method of increasing blood circulation to the scalp. So when you massage your scalp or when you turn your head upside down to increase the blood flow to your scalp, all it's doing is really just increasing the amount of oxygen that your follicles are getting and in turn it's rapidly producing hair to come out of your scalp. Alright? So yeah, that is how well, the turning your head upside down thing works. That is how massaging your scalp works. The next category that hair growth solutions usually fall under is antifungal, anti-inflammatory and antibacterial creams or topical ointments. So that is how we have castor oil working when we massage it onto our scalp. The act of massaging your scalp can actually increase blood flow to the scalp and as I said, increase the amount of oxygen that your follicles are getting in order to produce more hair growth. And also the actual oil, castor oil, is an anti-fungal and an anti-inflammatory oil. So here's a list of some more anti-inflammatory oils and some more anti-fungal oils. Now, it can all be a coincidence that these are the same oils that come up when you look on a list of best oils for fast hair growth. However, I have a different theory. If you have any actual fungus or bacteria on the scalp that you don't even know about, Applying castor oil on your scalp can actually be solving that issue that could be preventing hair growth because your your hair is actually coming out of little pores um, and if it is closed up or restricting the growth of the hair then yeah you ain't gonna be seeing maximum hair growth so what I usually like to say is that these things do not necessarily increase your hair growth rate unfortunately that is already genetically predetermined so most of these solutions for hair growth that people swear by the reason that they work okay based on my observation and my research is that they usually fix some underlying issue like fungus or bacteria on the scalp um, a malnourished body which just means you don't have all the vitamins that you need or you're not having a very balanced diet which quite honestly most of us don't and uh, what's the third thing yeah it's increasing blood circulation um, to the scalp all right I actually wanted to make a video dedicated to hair growth um, a long time ago from when I had relaxed hair because I did realize that you know people are coming out with a bunch of things to say Woo, this gives me 10 inches of growth in a week and yeah it kind of made me roll my eyes because I'm just like okay surprise surprise it has an anti-inflammatory ingredient in there oh surprise surprise it's a vitamin oh surprise surprise um, it's an antifungal ingredient in whatever you're using coochie cream tall fungus cream it really doesn't matter how outrageous it sounds it all more than likely will fall under those three components of maximum hair growth so I'm not surprised anymore by anything that comes out I don't think you should be either um yeah if I was told that there is cow manure that has peppermint oil and uh, um, eucalyptus oil and people were using it on their scalp and getting fabulous hair growth I would believe them I honestly would believe them because at the end of the day that horse manure or that cow manure or that monkey piss 
will have in an ingredient to maximize hair growth, okay? So to me, it's not about what the label says, it's about the ingredients, and that's just it. It's that simple. This brings me to my next point, the magic of marketing. Now, I know that nowhere, nowhere on this uh, ointment, it says that it's used for hair growth. However, if we take a look in the ingredients section, we have active ingredients, camphor, 4.8%, eucalyptus oil, 1.2%, and menthol, 2.6%. It's really fine, so it's hard to see, okay? So there are three main active ingredients. Now, I don't see, I don't see on the ointment where it says the other inactive ingredients, but one of the main ones I assume is petroleum, okay? I also heard somebody tell me that alcohol is in there. I don't know, I don't really, I don't see it on the back of the container and I can't really find it online, but yeah. We know the three main active ingredients. If you're the type of person who likes to make um, oils, make DIY oils for hair growth, then based on the ingredients of this vapor rub, it should not be a big deal using it on your scalp because these are mostly ingredients that people already use for hair growth scalp treatment, okay? Case in point, hold on. Is where it gone? Case in point, I have this uh, Itenio Repair and Growth Scalp Restore Hair Growth Serum. Used every other day, all right? This is a hair growth serum that I know works and I've heard a lot of persons rave about it. It heals their eczema on their scalp. It heals uh, all kind of issue. It prevents itching and all of that. And if we take a look over on the ingredients, it has castor oil, olive oil, coconut oil, da, 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 da. for the essential oils, it has peppermint oil and eucalyptus oil. What does Vix Vapor Rub have? It has uh, eucalyptus oil and menthol. And if we just do a quick Google search, what is menthol? Menthol is one of the main ingredients of peppermint oil. It's one of the main component components of peppermint oil and uh, yeah so already this marketable um, hair growth serum has two out of the three ingredients that is found in fixed vapor oil. but here we have marketing this is marketed as a hair growth serum and this is marketed as a cost suppressant ointment but they have common ingredients you see what i'm saying <laughs> i hope by now you guys see what my thought process is on vix vapor rub and one day guess what if this vapor rub thing gets so popular and people really realize how well it is working let me tell you a secret a company out there going to take these same active ingredients stir it up in a lab and put it in a bottle going to sell you it for three times the price of Vix Vapor Rub with the same ingredients and you know what they're going to put at the front of it? It's going to say hair growth oil. Bite. It works. And it's going to have the same exact ingredients as Vix Vapor Rub. It's almost as if, um, it's, it's, you know what it just reminds me of? buying olive oil at a beauty supply store and buying olive oil in a supermarket. I, I remember when I just started my channel and I was saying that I'm using olive oil in my hair and coconut oil in my hair. This is before the whole hair care movement was a thing, okay? And when I tell people that I'm using coconut oil in my hair and when I tell people I'm using olive oil in my hair, they would have given me the biggest dirty look ever. Like, are you crazy? Olive oil is for food and coconut oil. You don't even, you're not even supposed to cook with that. That is unhealthy. And you're not supposed to use it in your hair, okay? But look there now. Look there. It's, it is a common oil now to be used on our hair and our scalp. 
actually olive oil and coconut oil has been a common thing for hair care products that is the that it was the logic i used when i first heard about olive oil and coconut oil for the hair i'm like why in my mind do i find it so strange to use the same coconut oil from the supermarket and use it in my hair okay the one that they market for cooking purposes why well, i find it so weird to use it in my hair but at the same time i buy all these other hair products and what's it not with coconut oil and olive oil in there why why is it such a difference in my mind because of marketing that was what i was talking about yes some people still find it strange to buy coconut oil in a supermarket because in their head in their head that coconut oil and that olive oil is supposed to use solely for cooking whereas buying a little tiny bottle a tiny bottle of coconut oil that that is a fraction of the size of the one in the supermarket and also about five times the price of the one in the supermarket but they feel more comfortable buying the one from the beauty supply store because why it's marketed for hair it, it says on the label that it's used for hair whereas the one in the supermarket it is it says on the label it's used for food I have seen some videos where a person's like oh fix it's dangerous don't put it on your scalp oh no and I I, I can't help but laugh because I'm just like y'all do realize that your scalp is skin right and uh, this is a topical ointment so what's the big deal this even though it says on the label it's used for cough suppressant and it's a topical ointment that you're going to rub on your chest anyway it can still use for another purpose it's all a part of the magic of marketing if you can put it on one part of your skin why is it so unbelievable to put it on another part of your skin guys your scalp is skin it's skin you ever look at a bald head man it's skin it's just skin that goes over your cranium okay which is your skull okay it's skin if you don't have sensitive skin like my mom she can't use Vicks vapor rub because it's too harsh for her skin if she puts it on her arm it will turn her arm red so me not going to tell her to go use Vicks vapor rub on her scalp because she has sensitive skin so if you have sensitive skin by all means stay away from Vicks vapor rub because if it going burn your your skin on your arm it's going to burn the skin over your cranium which is your scalp so stay away from it another comment I saw that somebody said it's gonna break off your hair first of all I'm not using it on my hair I'm using it on my scalp all right um so and then and, and, and then uh, I know I'm getting uh. so that is why I thought that the petroleum was the issue which then brings me to the not the, the next thought how how is it that you have one standard for one section of your skin but then you don't have the same standard for the next section of your skin take a minute take it we're going to divert a little bit from the Vicks vapor rub we're going into the category now of parabens and sulfates we we're so against putting sulfates in our shampoos because it's bad for our hair it dries out our hair and it dries out our scalp but you all still have sulfates in your body washings that's way you take all paraben out of your hair products because it can cause cancer but paraben still in your lotion that's way because to me it just don't it don't it don't connect okay it just not it not connecting don't be surprised if you look in your beauty supply um, stores and you see more oils with similar ingredients as your fake vapor oil because that's marketing yeah that's pretty much my rant and I hope it was still educational if you still after all my points you're still outraged about using Vicks Vapor Rub on your scalp please let me know why down in the comment section I am thoroughly I am 
I am very curious to know why, okay? Okay, beauties, um, let me know if y'all are still interested in my DIY fix away forum. If not, as I said, I'm gonna mix up my own little thing because mama already bought the ingredients needed, one, two, and three ingredients needed for my DIY mix. So, yeah, just let me know if you want to see it, yes or no, if you don't, then I'll just keep it to myself. I don't have a problem. It don't matter to me. I'm going to make it because I personally do not want to use petroleum on my scalp and that's my only issue with using Vicks Vapor Rub. It has petroleum oil in it, even though it don't say it, I can't really find it, but based on the texture of the ointment, I'm assuming petroleum oil or some other heavy oil is in this, so I'm not going to use it on my scalp, but um, yeah, if you're not against petroleum on the scalp, then using Vicks Vapor Rub, in my opinion, should not be an issue. And if you don't have sensitive skin, all right? Just don't swallow it, all right? Don't make this into another um, Tide Pod challenge, all right? It's meant for a topical ointment, so once you're using it as a topical treatment, then you should be good. Cool. All right, so I feel like I repeat myself a lot throughout this video, and I know this is going to be one of my longer videos, but I think it was necessary. All right, so yeah, leave your comments down in the comment section. I will also leave a poll up in the i cards if you still want to see the DIY um, mix that I am going to make. And yeah, okay, beauties, share the video if you so wish. And uh, that's it. Okay, beauties, later. Mwah. Oh, and if you're new to my channel, be sure to also check out the i cards nonetheless because I have other kind of videos other than these camera rants, okay? And I have like hair tutorials and those kind of stuff, all right? Just check out the iCards, see the other type of videos I produce on this channel, and if you like what you see, you can subscribe. Okay, beauties, later! Mwah. So the aim of today is just to go through and trim about half inch of hair so as to remove the single strand knots while still maintaining the shape of my hair. So the entire theme for all these products that I've purchased is I've never tried any of them before Okay, these are first time buys and uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting because I have new products to try 